Have you ever wondered what the world would be like if Adam and Eve had exercised control over their appetite in the Garden of Eden? Good morning, dear viewer. I'm Pastor Mozzie. Welcome to this week's Word of Encouragement. This week, we're going to be speaking about prayer and fasting and the topics that we've selected to pray and to fast about as we go into 2021. It's been said that if a person's appetite is out of control, chances are that the rest of their lives are also out of control. And could it be said, perhaps, that the fall of mankind was brought about as a result of a person not being able to control their appetite? And we'd like to give you just a few basic principles this week concerning prayer and fasting and the concepts that we need to apply to our lives as we study this topic in a little bit more detail. Basically, human beings have four appetites. We have an appetite for material possessions. We have an appetite for spiritual things. We have a sexual appetite, and we have an appetite for food. And the strongest of these appetites is the appetite for food. When we bring our appetite for food under the submission and lordship and guidance of Jesus Christ, then in all probability the rest of our appetites will fall in line as well. Throughout the Bible, chronologically speaking, every third time there's a teaching on prayer, there's a teaching on fasting. And this proves to us that the Lord intended prayer and fasting and having a fasted lifestyle to be central in the life of a believer. And fasting is not a means to twist God's arm or to force him into doing something that he would otherwise not do. Fasting is not a means to get God to change his way of thinking or to change his mind to adapt to our thinking. Fasting is the method that God has given us, the most effective method that God has given us to humble ourselves and it enables us to align our souls and our spirit with God's soul and God's spirit. So fasting is not by any means a way of getting God to do something that suits you or me. Fasting is a way of getting us to get our hearts and minds and spirits aligned with God's and what he's got planned and in store for us. It's also the most effective way that God has given us for us to humble ourselves. Oftentimes you have people praying, they say, Lord, humble me. You don't want to pray that prayer. God gives us the instruction that we should humble ourselves. And fasting is the most effective way that we can use and apply to our lives for us to humble ourselves. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time He will lift you up in honor. We said fasting enables us to align our souls and our spirit with God's soul and spirit. And it sensitizes us, for want of a better word, to be able to tune in to what God is saying to us in the Spirit. And while there's no particular scriptural command or guideline as to how long we should fast, the Bible does give us a clear indication with regards to fasting that pleases God. In Isaiah 58, verse 6 to 9, and in Matthew 6, verse 5 to 18, Jesus gives us teachings about how we should fast. And the scripture gives us a clear indication about the kind of fasting that pleases God. We say that is because fasting is not something that you want to adopt if you want God to help you win a competition or to win a beauty prize or a beauty pageant. Now, there are physiological benefits for fasting, but the primary focus of fasting is for us to reconnect with God and have restored intimacy with the Father. When fasting enables us to humble ourselves and align our hearts and our spirits, with God. And each believer, as we go into this week, we're calling a week and proclaiming a week of prayer and fasting as Bikers Church here in the Vol Triangle to help us navigate whatever the future may hold for us. And we've chosen seven topics to be covered throughout the seven days of this week. But my encouragement to each one of you is that you prayerfully seek the Lord's face for His direction and leading as to how and when you should fast specifically in terms of which meals to skip and how to plan your week and implement this proclamation of a fast that we share in with you today. The Bible gives us this command in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray 
about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So these are the daily prayer topics that we've set out for the next following few days, and we'd like to share them with you. Day number one, we ask that you pray against fear. So many people the world over have been gripped by fear because of this pandemic that has hit this globe. Fear of what the future holds, fear of who's going to die next, fear of when am I going to get the disease, fear of where I'm going to get the income to support my family, fear of how long can my business's doors stay closed. We'd encourage you to pray this scripture into that situation of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. It says, don't be afraid. For I am with you. That's God's encouragement to you, dear listener. God says, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Don't be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Day two. Love God and love people. Pray for God to enable us to love Him in response to His love for us and for us to love people. The world needs the church of Jesus Christ to get back to the basics of what Christianity is all about. And in essence, it's this, loving God and loving people. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 39. Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. As the world increases its onslaught upon everything that is good and pure and holy and noble and scriptural, it becomes for some increasingly difficult to live a life of love. Scripture teaches us to guard our hearts against our love growing cold. So it's important that we pray that God enables us by His Spirit to love Him and then love people accordingly. Micah 6 and verse 8 says, No, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what He requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. So those are the two scripture verses for day two. Day three, pray for the exposure of lies and the exposure of truth. The world is being lied to by the devil and anybody who's willing to cooperate with him at the moment. This includes politicians, economists, secular media, health practitioners, and even people claiming, claiming to be Christians. There's lie upon lie out there. And sadly, people are being hoodwinked and tricked into believing lies. And the challenge is that if you believe a lie long enough, it becomes your reality, and then the devil has got you. The scripture verses that we'd like you to pray on this topic specifically, exposing lies and exposing truth, are the following two scripture verses. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 22, Jesus says, For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open, and every secret will be brought to the light. The word occult simply means hidden something that's hidden in the dark. We pray that that which is hidden gets brought out into the light and the love of Jesus Christ and the light and the power of God's word given to us. Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, Beware the yeast of the Pharisees, the hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light and what you've whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Let's pray that the secret, underhanded, conniving work of the devil that's done in the dark will be brought out into the light and exposed by the truth of God's work, God's word. Let's pray that false prophets will be exposed 
for that. And liars will be exposed for just who they are. Day number four, pray for discernment and understanding. With a world revolving around lies and conspiracy theories about viruses and vaccines and hidden political agendas and false prophets, we need to be able to discern, dear listener, from truth and lies. We need to have the understanding to be able to live in accordance with this insight. What do we do when God exposes truth and exposes lie for what they are? Understanding has been described as what to do with the knowledge you have. We need the Lord's wisdom and understanding to apply the knowledge that he shows to us in the day. The scripture verses for this topic are the following. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 18. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. We need discernment for that, ladies and gentlemen. Philippians 1, verse 9 to 10. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. Day number five. Pray for families to grow stronger. Because of sickness and the pressure of lockdown and lack of employment and financial pressures, there's been tremendous pressure placed on family relationships between husbands and wives and fathers and children. And families have taken real, real strain through the pain and suffering that this pandemic and the consequences of it have brought into our lives. Let's trust God to restore broken families and to strengthen family ties that are strong. Strengthen us to be able to withstand whatever the future may bring. The scripture verse for this topic of the day is Malachi chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, His preaching will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. So let's trust God to, in whatever 2021 has in store for us, to strengthen family ties. Your immediate family, those that share your surname, those you share a household with, and the family of believers in our local community here, as well as the Church of Jesus Christ globally. Day number six, pray for leaders. And this includes leaders from all walks of life, in industry and in business, in social circles, in political circles, as well as church circles. Leaders from all walks of life are under immense pressure to navigate their followers through these difficult times. And let's trust God to powerfully enable leaders to do what he's called them to do. Scripture verse for that is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, not just leaders. Ask God to help them and intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. The challenge with this is that the scripture teaches that every platform of authority has been given by God, albeit that it's not always exercised in a godly manner. That platform of authority and influence has still been given by God. It helps us understand how important it is to pray for our leaders, folks. I want to encourage you to pray for your pastoral staff, and folks that care for you in your church circles, the folks who um, employ you, and the political leaders of the countries. And last but by no means least, day seven. Let's pray for grateful hearts. Here at Bikers Church, Vol Triangle, we've recently done a two-part series on having an attitude of gratitude and how your positive attitude will determine your altitude. And we're surrounded by so many things to complain about and to moan and groan and bicker about. We need, God, we need God's help to help us remember the good things that he's done for us. To help us count our blessings more than the troubles that we see on a daily basis. Because if we see things the way God sees things, we will see that we have so much more to be grateful for than we have to complain about. Scripture verse for this is 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 34. It says, 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And folks, that concludes the topics for the seven days that lay ahead. We want to encourage you as we call this fast this Sunday morning that you start from this Sunday evening, the 10th, and finish it off on Sunday evening, the 17th. As far as the practicalities are concerned as to when and how you should fast and how many meals you should skip, as we said in the beginning, we'd encourage you to prayerfully get God's guidance and His input as to when and how you should do that. But practically, what you can do is when you fast, you skip a meal or you skip several meals or you go several days without meals, that when you're hungry, when your stomach starts to file complaints, when you think of going to the fridge or breaking out that lunchbox or making a meal for yourself, use that time to pray instead, specifically according to those topics that we've given you. Then when you do decide to break the fast, however long you've chosen to fast, do it carefully and in wisdom. Don't just go and gulp down a kilogram of ribs or a huge 800-gram T-bone steak. Uh, that could be problematic for your digestive system. Do it in wisdom and break the fast either with uh, fresh fruit juice or diluted fruit juice or simple good old-fashioned water, which has stood the test of time longer than any other substance. And you decide then how many meals you should or shouldn't skip. So thank you for taking the time to listen to us this morning and prayerfully consider joining us as we proclaim this fast. And let's trust God that these daily topics that we've shared with you are not just clever man-made ideas, but something that is on God's heart. And trust God to bring you personal breakthrough. Breakthrough for the loved ones that you're praying, through, uh, praying for. Breakthrough for the leaders and breakthrough for us as a church and the church of Jesus Christ globally as his church is called to make a difference and to have a positive impact in this world that so desperately needs it. We love and appreciate you all and we care for you and sincerely and fervently pray for you all the time. Until such time that we meet together again, may Almighty God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance over you and give you his supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. Take care and God bless. Cheers.